Ah, hello there. Hello. Good to finally meet you. I am Sebastian Ochoa. As you may recall, I have autism. We meet at last. Steve, uh, Staley? Yes, Staley. Close. Staley. We meet at last, Steve Staley, a.k.a. Neji Huga from Naruto Shubadin. There it is, yes. Uh, This is better, sorry. (laughs) It's okay, but I've waited a long time to finally get in touch with you, just like my friend Chris Mayek did all these months ago. Right, he did an interview with you too, that's right. He's the whole reason why I want to interview you and so many other voice actors. Oh, good. Well, I see that you've got a, a nice long list uh, on your um, your tweets and everything and your IG. Yes, because of what Chris Mayek did, he motivated me into getting in touch with more voice actors. That way, I can finally show everyone just how good I am with all these, just like Chris did. All right, good for him and good for you. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, I have many questions I've been wanting to ask you. Sure. <clears throat> Tell me, how is it like being a voice actor in, in animation? It's great, you know. Um, you get a chance to act a lot of parts that you might not otherwise get to do if you were doing on camera because you can play a much wider range of characters. You get to work with um, people who were great, who at a certain point you've known for many years. So it's like you're working with your family. I see. So this is the best part about why you like to do voice acting, which gets me to one most important question. How did you get into voice acting? I moved to California when I was uh, 19 to go to college. And then after college, I moved from Orange County to Los Angeles to begin pursuing my career in show business in acting and started doing all the things that people do getting headshots, trying to find agents, going on auditions. And then you learn about all the ways to make money as an actor. And one of those ways is voiceovers. And so me and a roommate at the time took a voiceover class together. And at the end of it, I thought, hey, you know what? This is another avenue through which I could pursue my dreams of acting. And and um, why, why don't I try this as well? And so I started pursuing voiceovers in addition to all of my other pursuits and um uh, started getting jobs and got introduced to the gang of people who do dubbing which is where i first started doing anime and um then a lot of years happen and the next thing you know you have a career i see so this is how you got to voice acting yeah with- of course, leads me to one question, though. Why do you like playing in anime so much? Well, mostly when you're an actor, the phone rings and you get an audition and you audition for it and you get the parts that you get. And so over time, I've been lucky enough to be associated with different studios and um, people who make content that I've gotten those uh, parts. So I've I've been lucky in that regard, and that is why I like it so much. I see. So this is why you like being in a lot of anime, because of the things you begin to experience a lot, which, of course, leads me to many questions about your characters that I've looked up in, which there is one thing, though. But in the movie Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, what was your favorite part about playing the character Kadash? Uh, my favorite part about that was that he was sort of um, villainous. And so I really enjoyed getting to dig into playing this crazy villain um, because although I've played some crazy parts, that was the a, a, a bigger part that was kind of crazy. And so it was fun to dig into his uh, kind of lunacy, which was different than a lot of the um, young 
uh, enthusiastic boy parts that I was doing up until that time. So it was fun to play Kadaj because he was kind of evil. And um, and the movie itself was really cool, especially at the at the time this many years ago. I see. So this is why you like playing that character, because all I can tell is that you are super awesome villains, along with uh, Fred Tash or Dave Wittenberg, because you two, you three were like, hey, Gadosh, is that where Big Brother lives? Yeah. Right. Do you think yeah. you'll be glad to see us? Not a chance. Don't cry, a zoo. But right. We spent a lot this. of time on that show, do a lot of recording sessions to get that just right. <laughs> yeah, because all I can tell, you are super awesome at playing villains. Which, well, speaking you. of that, <clears throat> there is one character, of course, that I have in mind. But <clears throat> what was the biggest thing about when you played the character Tishiro Hitsugaya in Bleach? Well, just finding out, just finding the way that he was... Um, uh, a sage-like captain, but so small and young looking that was a joke in the show, right? That everybody thought of him as a child, kind of, even though he wasn't. So the fun of that was that it was um, uh, serious on one hand, and then there were the times when it got to be humorous and um, a lot of fun fight scenes and interaction with the other characters like Toshiro and Rangiku, and that's the the fun part. I see. So that is the biggest thing about playing that character. For what I can tell, that character makes me laugh a lot, which means you make me laugh a lot. Like like one time when you when you and Megan Hollingshead's characters were with each other, and you were doing this, you have a very distinctive voice. <laughs> and it made right. me laugh a lot. And when you interacted with Vic's character, uh, Ikaku, when you did the Matarame, you're gonna pay. You remember right. that. those guys? Those guys really had a way of getting Toshiro angry. And uh, Megan, and since Bleach has been over for quite a long time, uh, interestingly enough, Megan and I are gonna be doing a uh, Valentine's Streamily signing. Uh, together so uh to highlight you know characters who have some kind of a a fun relationship for valentine's day and we'll, we're going to be doing a, a dual signing which is the first time i've ever done anything like that especially bleach related or or with megan so i'm looking forward to that that ought to be fun i see because all i know is that i've interviewed megan hollingshead weeks ago and i must say she's a very awesome woman you know just like you are a very awesome actor, of course. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, she doesn't live here anymore, uh, so I, I, I don't see her at sessions, not to mention we're still all working from home. So it'll be fun for us to get to uh, figure out how to do a, a live Instagram together from our different, our different locations. Yeah, I notice. But anyway, <clears throat> there is one question I've been wanting to ask, but... How is it like playing the character Neji Hyuga from Naruto Shubiden? Well, Neji was fun because he was in the show for so many years and in a way similar to Toshiro, right? Very serious. Sometimes he would get into jokes, which was what made the show. Oh, I don't remember the name of the show because we called it. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe Oh, Rock, Rock Lee and Friends. But there's an, it has another name when it came out, but I only know it as Rock Lee and Friends because that's what it was when we were working on it. But that got, that was fun because it was jokey the entire time. I see. Because all I can tell is that your character is such a great character, you know? Because especially when he, when I seen him, like his origins, of course. And from what I can tell, I was like, boy, I feel sorry for Neji. They should learn better, you know? Yeah, he, ha he has a great backstory, and it was fun to work on him, especially across so many arcs. Yeah, especially one when he, when he supports many of his friends, you know, including Rock Lee and Ten-Ten of 
team guys team. Right. Yeah, th- that's uh, that's true. And it was also fun to do uh, the show with them on Rock Lee and Friends because they also got to be a little bit crazier than we were on the regular Naruto. I see that, which is, of course, hilarious when it comes to you doing your characters a lot. Which, speaking of that, <clears throat> what was your favorite thing about being in the show Sailor Moon? I feel like I, I mean, most recently I was in Sailor Moon as um, Rubius. Ru- Crispin Rubius, yeah. Uh, and that was fun because similar to Kadaj in, in, in a way, he had a, he had a secret agenda. And um, that, that made it fun to play him. And it was also just from a standpoint of uh, going into work fun because that show was just, me and the director Susie and it, it was always fun to go into those sessions and for us to come up with um w- with how how we would approach uh Crispin and we had a little joke where at uh, one time it said Rubius on the script and I thought the name was Crispin Rubens and so we, we would always have a joke about Crispin Rubens <laughs> instead of Rubius and that would make us laugh so um mainly it was fun going to work and, and doing that show in the, in the moment, my, my work, as opposed to the show and the plot, if that makes sense. I see. So that was your, your thing about being that character. For what I can tell, he is much of a serious villain than I thought working for the main antagonist himself. He was like, so I have this most intense feeling that there are sailor guardians coming here. We will make sure we will deal with the Sailor Guardians until there is nothing left of them. Right. That was, again, another villain, a fun, a fun part to play. Although he, when it came down to work, I didn't really have that many hours on the show because he doesn't have that many lines. And so in many ways, I wasn't very connected to it just because the hours it took for me to go to go to work and do it weren't weren't a ton of hours. Um, but it was great to play that, that part because of the, the, the delicious way in which he got to be kind of evil. I see. So that's what makes you that good with that character, which speaking of good characters, <clears throat> what was your best about part about playing Megillius Freerit in mobile suit Gundam blood iron orphans? That part I liked a lot because that was the first part where I didn't have to play um, a young kid. Although I wouldn't think of Neji as a young kid or whatever, but it got to be a, a you know a full on grown up, um, slightly heroic uh, inner life, different part of a story going on himself, and he got to be cool and in charge and tough, and it, that was a a fun part to play because it was a little bit different than some of the stuff I uh, had done up to that point. I see. So this is what makes you good about playing that character. For what I can tell, you have a very great monologue for like one minute, you know, talking about the speech about being a hero and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, he, he did have a lot to do on that show, which I liked. And also I, um, at that point had been associated with, several different Gundam things. And so it was, oh, yikes, sorry. And so it was um, fun to, hold on, are we still there? Sorry, I had a phone call come in, I apologize. It's Um, okay. It was fun to have uh, uh, that, all that stuff to work with. I'm sorry, I forgot the question. That threw me off. That phone call. It's, it's okay. You're just trying to do your best. But anyway, <clears throat> there is one question from the the fans of the show, Berserk. But how is it like playing the character Griffith in Berserk? Uh, that also was fun. I, I I was not really aware of Berserk. And then I, I auditioned and got this part. But it wasn't until I got it that I was aware that it was there had been someone else playing it. And then I came in and I still don't entirely understand how that, how that uh, went, but that was nevertheless 
fun to do because it took place right over here at a studio very very nearby and um uh that character was middle of the road and fun who had a lot of um interesting and sometimes crazy stuff uh stuff to do so it's a part where i got to collaborate with the director on how they wanted it to go because it had come from a history of stuff and and make it something that had the continuity that a show needs when you're going through all those seasons and um sometimes the casting change takes place i see because all i know is that i've seen the show berserk and i must say your character griffith of course he's like he's like the rival of the main character guts like and you know what else some people wanted wanted griff griffith to end up dying beheaded you know because he'll be like ah, this can't be it's impossible ah. right uh all, all of those intense scenes that you got to go for it when you're in the studio yeah it's like it's like a reminder of jojo's bizarre adventure you know <laughs> so, i suppose yeah which, speaking of that, <clears throat> which character that you have played in the past has been the most challenging to you, and why? Hmm. In some ways, I would, I don't know. I, I, I guess I could say Benajer Lynx, only because there was so much material and such a lot, a lot of... Uh, heavy lifting in terms of screaming and yelling and, and emotional intensity. I don't know if I would say it was difficult, but it was definitely arduous in that we had to get through a lot of material that demanded a lot from me in, in many different areas. And since there was so much material, I was there, you know, for many hours at a time. And, and uh, I see it had a, a great demand, which isn't necessarily a show that you would think I would mention as one that was, challenging but it was for a, a variety of reasons not just the role in the acting so this has been the most challenging to you now i'm beginning to understand what's been most challenging to you recently but in some case <clears throat> what do you like to do before voice acting you mean like before i go to work before you voice act what would do you like to do I suppose, I guess I, I warm up if it's in the morning, I, you have to warm up. So I do a lot of exercises for my lips and tongue, you know, to get myself uh, warmed up and then, um, get your voice going, uh, so that if you have to scream or yell, you're, you're prepared. So that, that's, that's the the main thing whether i'm working here at home or whether i am um, having to go to the studio that's what i do before going to work i see so that's what you like to do before voice acting which of course we do the one thing <clears throat> do you usually hang out with a lot of voice actors after voice sessions are over sometimes in the old days right before we all started working at home it it uh, would more turn into maybe hanging out outside the front door of the studio if you see somebody that you know, because we're coming in one at a time. So you only ever see, if you see someone, the person leaving when you're getting there or the person coming when you're leaving. And so very often you stand outside and hang out with them or they're the same people that you see somewhere else at an audition or maybe the, a company has a dinner, stuff like that. So yeah, definitely uh, we see each other and, and hang out. I see. So that's what you, so that's what's been happening a lot. But in some case, <clears throat> there is one question that I have in mind, which is from the fans of the show that I've been watching called Demon Slayer. What was it like casting in the, casting people into that show? Luckily, it, the way that uh, casting works in some companies is that the 
a casting director handles that and management is in charge of that. And so the only thing I have to be responsible for is helping create these performances and putting it all together in a, in an appropriate way. And so I luckily don't have that responsibility. It all comes to me already put together with the actors. And so all I have to do is uh, work with the engineer and the actor in any given session to fulfill the number of lines and make sure that they're um, well acted and that we've, we haven't missed anything, right? It's, or it needs to be organized. And so that part is always fun, especially to have people come in knowing that this is a very popular show and everybody's excited to come to work on it and to find out what happens in the, in the story of um, Tanjiro and, and everybody else, not to mention it's such a, a beautiful looking show. I see. So that's what makes you good at casting the voice actors. From what I can tell, I I just interviewed with one of your voice actor friends, Dorothy Fawn, whom she wanted to say hello to you. Hi, Dorothy. Boy, she and I have known each other for many years. And um, we've been in plays together and I've directed her in, in anime. So I saw your post with her as a guest and um, I'm glad she said to say hello, and I say hello right back to you, Dorothy. Yeah, because yeah. you know who else will be my guest? Dina Sherman. Awesome. When, when, when will that be? Oh, it's easy. It's in the 16th, and she wanted to say hello to you. Hello back. I hope everybody gets to see this, and we'll say hello to each other. Yes, and especially to my friend, Chris Mayek. That's the gang for sure. Yes, exactly. By next week, <laughs> I'm going to interview with one and only Kimberly Brooks. Cool. You might recall her from, from that game you voice acted in called Mass Effect. Oh, yeah, Mass Effect. Wow, that's that, and that at this point is quite a few years ago. Yeah, that was a fun game. But the truth of that is I only worked on that maybe one or two times for, for a minimal number of hours. So even though there I am in that game, the amount of hours it took me to participate in that were very few compared to the other things that I'm involved in and, and other, other things that I do. So the, the truth is, I do have memories of that recording session, uh, of course, but uh, the total number of hours I spent working on that project were not very many because the director, Ginny McSwain, was able to get us through all this material in a real timely fashion. Oh, now that's be something I begin to notice because all I know is that I play that game, you know, and the game, it reminds me a lot about my uncle, Daniel, who lives in California, which you are in right now. I am in California. And where are you? I forgot. Florida. Oh, okay. Which is I mean, I, I knew that you were on the, uh, uh, East Coast time, but I just didn't know where. Yeah, which is it's still wild. morning here. For me, it's the afternoon, actually. Middle of the afternoon, yeah. It's the, it's the truth, you know. So, yeah, that's something I wanted to tell you, you know, especially when it comes to uh, having daylight things happening, you know. <laughs> that's so true, yes. Yeah. There is one thing I have always wanted to say to you, but I've always wanted to ask you if you would like to if you ever voice cast the Demon Slayer again, I would like you to cast Chris J. Alex as any character that might have the perfect fit for the character. That's right. Well, uh, we'll put it to the casting director to make that choice and hopefully uh, get him booked on uh, this show. Yeah, I was hoping you might say that. Well then, my friend, <clears throat> it was so nice talking to you Thank you for taking the time to speak to me. I really enjoyed talking to you, and I hope you have a great day. I'm glad we were able to get it together and make our, our interview today work out. And I appreciate you being able to come on a little bit early. That helps uh, me get on to the rest of my day. I have a, a class that I have to guest direct a little later, and I'd like to go get a bite to eat before that. And so thank you for coming on a little bit early. And I hope everybody who ends up watching this enjoys it. Yes. And uh, 
Oh, one more thing before we go. Yeah. Would you tell your voice actor friends about our interview together? In case if I, you know, post it on Instagram and Twitter and tag them along, they should, they should know about our interview, especially the link I want to send to you when we're done. That way they know that they should be a part of it, just like the rest I've interviewed for months. That's right. We all see those, uh, those posters of yours come up, and that'll be an exciting uh, way for you to promote this. <laughs> I was hoping you might say that, and I'm glad you said that. That's why I would just say this at once. You really are one of my favorite voice actors. I really Yay! want to cast for my show one day. Send me the booking. I'll, I'll be there. I oh, I will. Up. Trust me. I will never forget it. Never. Yes. <laughs> well, then, I guess I'll see you around through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's right. We got to love the social media. I appreciate you asking me and uh, sticking to your guns. This has been a fun interview and um, good luck to you in the future. And hello to everybody. And thank you for uh, watching. <laughs> and yes. And I hope to see you around, my friend. Indeed. I'll speak. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.